an absolute icon of American culture. An awe-inspiring creature with a non-confrontational disposition, but when confronted, is a powerful and deadly animal. The Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake, the world's largest rattlesnake species, and a species that's quickly vanishing here in the South. Today, we're heading to the uplands of South Mississippi, to an area there's been a reported diamondback sighting quite recently. I don't have a jeep anymore. I can't get this shot. When looking for animals, it's important to know what their neighbors are. For the rattlesnake, that's oftentimes going to be the gopher tortoise, a species that I've gotten to work with quite a bit here in the south. But this could also include coach whips, scarlet kings, and a whole stack of other longleaf species that are incredibly rare. And it just goes to show you how important these habitats are especially the grasslands. Now in these very tall grassy sections, we get a lot of different species of grass that snakes will actually love to live alongside. This here, all these little bunches, is called wire grass. It's actually a very important species for indigo snakes east of here. Diamondbacks like to coil up underneath since this grass gets so big. But we don't have a lot of it here in South Mississippi. Typically what you're gonna see is a lot of this really tall wild blue grass, which is the stuff that most people don't want on their property. Now the other thing you'll see is actually longleaf saplings. And all of this brush, all of this grassy section is what the diamondbacks will coil up right next to their burrow sitting in. They will just sit in a pile of grass and they can be very difficult to spot. These habitats have been absolutely shredded by logging and lack of habitat management. You can see exactly why we're losing species at the rate we are. Tortoises, snakes, small mammals, amphibians, they all get mulched, along with stacks of unused lumber. Well, if y'all ever wonder what happens to habitat down here, this is pretty much it. All the loblolly that's been thinned and prepped for clearing. Pretty much garbage. And then have a look at what they leave. Now this is exactly what all the locals think when they think where you're gonna see a rattlesnake because what happens is they leave these piles of wood and then the diamondback has now lost its home and has one place to go. It goes to these big piles of wood. When people come around these big piles of wood, they're either collecting lumber or moving it or whatever. They see it and they're like, ah, these things are everywhere out here. They kill it, they throw it away, they eat it, they do whatever with it and now that one rattlesnake that was living here, that was forced into this one location, is now killed. Everybody thinks they're everywhere, but they just happen to kill the only one. It's quite a shame, and this is a fate that's all too common for these areas. And while some species survive, the native pine dwellers often don't. After a wild goose chase around the milled areas with no rattlesnakes out today, I went to some of the nicer, more managed forests, make sure to check out this video for more of that, that I've been working on a good bit. It's a world of a difference from the pine farms, and I never know what I'm going to see here, but if I had to pick one thing, it would be exactly what we ended up seeing. It's a monster! That is a huge Mississippi Diamondback! Hello, sweetie, look at you! You're not even rattling. Oh, it's okay. Wow, she is dark. That is an incredible animal. I figured during this kind of weather, one of these snakes would be out. You haven't rattled that man. I wonder if that's how you've survived out here. One thing that a lot of researchers have indicated, and I'm not sure if this is 100% true or not, but a lot of the rattlesnakes that survive in heavily developed areas are ones that don't let you know that they're there, that don't rattle. That's still heavily debated, and I still am a little bit on the fence of that myself, but she hasn't rattled, so that could be very true. Notice how her head follows where I go. This is a very intelligent snake. Look, watch, I'll go on this side, and she's just gonna follow. Look at her move, that's crazy. Woo -hoo -hoo. Whoa. First rattle. It's all right. I mean, this is a mat, I would guess that this snake is easily over 15 pounds. Like, this is a big snake. And she's not being mean. This is actually a very laid back diamondback. They're nothing like the canebrake slash timber rattlesnakes that we're used to seeing. This is a much more athletic snake species and they're oftentimes much more willing to strike. They're much more aware of where you're at and they're willing to throw out a strike every once in a while. When disturbed, this is a snake that if left alone, they're not gonna want anything to do with you. But when you approach them like this, they're very defensive. They rear that head up and notice, whenever I move, her head follows, much more aware than a cane break. I can't believe that we have these snakes here in South Mississippi. I mean, they just seem so out of place, but this is where they belong. These are the places that they were meant to be. It's just their habitat has been shifted so harshly and everyone kills these snakes. The second they see it, it's in, it, 
It's just not a mindset that I can understand. Looking at this animal. Although I can understand why she'd want to kill me. Notice the way? The moment, the very second that anything touches her tail, how she pulls in, she goes, whoop, nope, don't like that. Hook, doesn't matter. Hands, nowhere near this snake. Don't think, oh, you know, he's too long, he can't come back. Incorrect, these are a super muscular snake, and I really just want to be handling with the hook only. Hook, safest way to do this. Now don't any of you go and try this at home. It's way too dangerous, and I have hundreds, literally hundreds of snakes under my belt. Here we go, she's finally settled down a little bit. Yep. Ooh. Never mind. She's still very alert, but this is still, make no mistake, very laid back diamondback. Compared to the world record size rattlesnakes that you would see in Georgia or Florida, this guy isn't even half grown. They can get twice this size. They can get twice as long, and they can probably get about three times as thick. This is actually a pretty thin, it's just more of a longer snake. I, I would actually reckon the one that we caught in Florida was a bit thicker. Now, the way that we saw this snake is pretty much how you're gonna see them in a very particular time of the year, coiled up outside of brush piles and burrows. But you'll see them under things, they'll hide right inside of stuff. I mean, they are camouflage in a sense, but whew, when, when you see this animal, it's just like, pop, it is just there. Now they don't have all those yellows and those really contrasty colors that they have over in Florida. And this is because the Mississippi one, they just have this really dark, dark coloration. And I guess that's more to match this very dense vegetation area. There's not a lot of grasses here. I guess if there was a lot of grasses, you'd have the more lighter diamondbacks. Whereas in stuff like this where it's super dense, you get the darker variants like this guy. Now as we've talked about before, these snakes have been super oppressed here in Mississippi, but you know where they've been oppressed even more so is in Louisiana. It is absolutely insane that we lost these animals in my home state. That is just ridiculous. We cannot let that happen, and if they are left somewhere, we've got to find a way to preserve them in those areas. People see this animal and they think, wow, that's a big, deadly snake. we got to get rid of that. Most people would kill this animal, and that, it just, it irks me at this point. I'm past the point of understanding where people come from when it comes to killing this animal. I understand not wanting one to live in your yard or somewhere like that, but how do you not see how incredible this thing is? It's like a little dragon that lives out here in Pine Forest. It's just insane to me. Really, all of human history, we've killed these animals. They are out here catching rabbits, living in gopher tortoise burrows. They're a part of this ecosystem, and they're gorgeous. They belong here, and this is the place that we want to see these animals out here in Mississippi Pine Forest. I'm not asking for people to leave these guys in their yard. In fact, I'll come pick them up if you're anywhere in the state. What I'm asking is that people respect these animals, that they give them their distance when they find them, and if they're somewhere where they really can't stay, that we relocate them to safe habitat. And if they are somewhere they can stay, that we leave them alone and respect them as one of the top reptile predators out here in Mississippi's Pine Forest. An absolutely incredible experience. I just, I cannot tell you guys how just ecstatic I am to see this animal out here. I'm more ecstatic about this animal in this state, probably more than any others. I mean, I could find a mole king, I could find a black pine, I could find all these incredible species that are out here, but none of them, none of them to me compare to the Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake. What a magnificent animal. These are without a doubt one of the most intimidating rattlesnake species you can encounter. But just because they're deadly doesn't mean they don't have a place. And I know I'm not the only one who wants to keep seeing these animals for generations to come. So I'll do my best to educate, advocate, and eventually rebuild a space for these animals to call a home. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing and check out the time we missed an Eastern Diamondback here in the state of Mississippi as well. Really great adventure that one, leading up to today. Wow, what a time. We're gonna go ahead and let this beauty on our way, but that is stunning. World's deadliest rattlesnake, Eastern Diamondback, what a joke.